Dodds Furniture's The Show is brought to you by Dodds Furniture and Mattress. Now open in Nanaimo. My name is Matt Carter and welcome to the show here on Shaw TV. Very exciting. This is episode number 50. Yes, the Toronto Maple Leafs can actually make the playoffs and we can actually make show number 50 here. It's awesome stuff. Now before I get into what's happening on the show, a uh, very exciting show this episode, I want to give some shouts out to some folks uh, involved with the history. Now this show was actually started by Kate Bergen, the original host and producer, and also Todd Jones, original director, who was actually over there directing right now. This was sort of their brainchild. He's cheering himself. <laughs> this is their brainchild again to highlight Vancouver Island personalities and causes and also offer volunteer broadcasting opportunities to the community, so great on them. Also, history is uh, complete without mentioning the work of Staz Bobkoff and Stephen Qu uh, Quartz. Sorry, there are technicians that put everything together, got all these cameras working, got the microphones working, patched it in. So again, huge thanks to the four of them for getting the show going and off the ground. Again, we'll recognize more folks later on. Right behind me there, jamming away, uh, it's the Tracers, the new band from Nanaimo with roots in the VIU jazz program. You're going to meet Robbie and Will later on when they chat with the guy who actually traced all of his projects in art class, Mr. Andrew Roberts. And actually, speaking of art class, we just go over here, we've got Juliet working on a banner. Juliet, how are you doing? Excellent, we got some beautiful stuff. We're gonna find out more about that and the Nanaimo Festival of Banners. And Bob Fenty will be speaking with uh, Brenda Peck, coordinator of the Festival of Banners, again, to find out more about one of Nanaimo's coolest art exhibitions. Bob will also be back to speak with uh, Susan Carlson and Susan Davison from the Kiwanis Sunrisers about upgrades to the Departure Bay Water Park. Moving on, Ana Bosa is here with Aaron Hemmons of the Canadian Cancer Society to find out more about Daffodil Month to see if it's a 30-day celebration of Kate Bergen's middle name or if it's actually a national campaign about uh, cancer. Now, when it comes to men wearing high heels, sometimes it's debaucherous and sometimes it's quite liberating and sometimes it's actually for a great cause and awareness, such as the case is a fourth annual Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, Nanaimo's Men's March, coming up soon, benefiting Haven Society. Our own Brian Sugiyama is going to find more about that, speaking as well with Sarah Dymock from the Haven Society and event participant Brian Bogey. And I saw his shoes, and I think he actually stole them off the set of The Wizard of Oz. Very, very, very sparkly. Uh, we're also going to have Brian investigating Habitat funding and affordable housing with Teresa Pring, the Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity. And finally, we've got two great segments on health and wellness. Anna Bosa will be talking fitness with trainer Curtis Vitsa, and yes, it is the first Vitsa to accept MasterCard. And we're also going to have Lorraine Jensen showing us how to make the right step toward wellness and gardening with Nanaimo chiropractor Jason Hare. Now, my inside sources tell me that Jason is actually a bit of a competitive runner, which marks, of course, the first time in racing history that uh, the Hare beat the turtle. All right, now, here we go. It's the big show, 5-0. It's the show right here on Shaw TV. like some kind of a gothic painting, don't we? I think we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Congratulations once again on the 50th episode of the show. My name is Lorraine Jensen, and my guest today is Dr. Jason Hare, otherwise known as Dr. J. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Now, Dr. J is a chiropractor, mm -hmm. and you know, I, it's perfect timing, as always, that you're here today. My mother is at home today at my house, and she's staying with me for a few days, Got up this morning, as soon as the sun came out, she's been outside gardening, and she'll be there until the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. And when I got home tonight, she'll say she's had the best day ever, and yet she's really sore. So you're here today to give us some tips on how to move and bend and stretch when you're gardening? You bet, preventative tips. Um, you're absolutely right. You know, all winter long, we're not terribly active. Summer comes, and it's all upfront work. We've got to get out and we've got to rake the moss out of the lawn. We've got to clear out the winter debris. We've got a weed. We've got a plant. And it's go, 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 go. And we go from zero to 60 and eight hours later we're in back pain. So sometimes a little bit of prevention keeps away the, the garden variety back pain. Uh, so what I thought we'd, we'd do is talk a little bit about how to use some of these implements of destruction. So why don't we talk about the rake first of all. Why don't you, why don't you show me how you would rake it. Just pretend we've got a, a bit of mess here, you know, okay. there's moss in the lawn. How are you going to do so? 
Right. That's actually not too bad. Uh, pretty close. What I would say is when you, when you are doing shoveling, when you're doing raking, you need to avoid the bend and the twist. Um, you can just try this right now. Bend forward a little bit. Feel how much work you're doing in your back. Now come back up. Twist. Feel how much work you're putting into your back. Now while you're twisted, bend forward. And you should feel that's a lot more work in your yeah. back. Yeah. One plus one isn't two when it comes to bending and twisting. It's 20. Okay, and when I see disc herniations, when I see serious back injuries in the clinic, that's the thing that's, that people are doing. It's not necessarily a heavy thing. It could be picking up a, a leaf off of the lawn. It's the bend and the twist. So when you're raking, what you want to do, I'm going to use my shovel here now just okay. as, a, as a mock. Oh. But what you want to do is you actually want to hold like this, and you want to rake this way. Give that a try. So do you see what you're doing? You're using your arms. You're keeping your back straight, okay? And that's key. You need your, your, your pelvis and your chest to face the same direction. You know the X factor? The X factor isn't good here. You need to make sure you're keeping your chest and your pelvis the same way. So let's see you give that a go. This is how I was standing to power lift the last time I was here. Well, there you go. I'm sure Rhonda would be quite <laughs> proud. So there you go, that way. Now also, we've got the shovel. And I'm glad that we brought this one because we've got a nice long handle. A lot of garden shovels, they've got these little teeny tiny handles. Yep. Not terribly good. Okay. Also, they have the very large spade. Also, it allows you to load ah, it up way too heavy. So long handle. It makes it faster. Short, makes it faster, but you need to think about how you're going to feel at the end of the day. Right. And again, what you want to do, what a lot of people do is when they shovel, they plant their feet. Okay? And they're digging, and they're chucking, and they're bending, and they're twisting. Not good. So what you want to do is this foot should actually move with you. So what you do is you use your momentum. You pick it up, and you chuck. And so now you see my chest and my, shoulder, my hips are actually facing the same direction all of the, the time, like that. Do you see? Give that a go. Right? No, not quite right. Just, just to make it a little more friendly. There you go, like okay. that. Okay, well, you know what? We're gonna go practice this. Yeah. While Bob Fenty interviews Sue and Sue from Kiwanis about the waterfront park and then we'll come back and maybe plant some flowers and I'll practice my digging. Sounds fantastic. Okay, over to you, Bob. Thanks, Lorraine, and, and I do have to comment, it's not Sue and Sue, it's Sue and, Sue and Rose uh, from the uh, Kiwanis Sunrisers Club and we welcome them today. And actually, they're both past presidents of the club. Uh, Sue Carlson is the current uh, secretary and Rose, Davison is the treasurer. She handles all the money. And we're going to talk today about that wonderful park down at Departure Bay, the Departure Bay Water Park. Welcome, Sue and Rose, to the show. Glad to have you here today. Thank you for having and, us. And, uh, you know, it's been around for a long time, hasn't it, Sue? Tell us how long that's been there. It was built in about 1991, 1991. So we're looking at about 22, 23 years now. 23, and uh, how did it get its start? Well, it was something that the Kiwanis Sunrisers uh, had sort of observed that there was nowhere at that point. It was long before the Kin Hut and that part or that park was yeah. built. So the um, club put in a big chunk of change, didn't they? About ninety-five thousand wow. dollars. And if you go back that many years, and you realize the amount, uh, the equivalent today mm -hmm. would be rather sub more substantial. Significant, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it was. So they, which we provided to the city, and the city took it from there. And so built. Rose, what, what was the condition of the park like before all of this renovation and upgrading started? Well, it was showing its wear and tear because it's a popular park and, and the benches and the seats, and lots of kids use it and, uh, yeah. and the equipment was, the city itself had made it and it was showing its wear and tear and it sort of reaching a danger point too for so the kids I'm using sure it. I'm sure it was, yeah. yeah. So now we're at the point too where where things are happening. And actually, I'm going to hold up a picture, which Sue took today, of some construction that's going on. And that's my phone. And I must apologize for having that. And I'm going to turn it off right now. Thank you very much. Sorry about that, folks. But yeah, my apologies. There's yeah. a picture of what's happening down at Departure Bay Water Park as we speak right now. Yep. So that's how much money is being spent, Sue? I think it's about 250000 225000 Wow. is going into it again now. Big a, chunk of change. A huge chunk. Big chunk of change. Mm -hmm. and, and of that, though, there is a considerable, what's it called, Rectech? Is that the name of the company? I believe Rectech yeah. is the Rectech, Rectech, yeah, Rose, you can tell us yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. How much? Mm -hmm. and They're putting $125,000 in, and uh, 
water features. Features, yeah. The kids and some yeah. of the you can see some of them there. You can I think see some of them getting ready there. Yeah, yeah. Just the some of them are getting yeah. into, into place now. So mm -hmm. yeah. In place. Some of them are still wrapped up, but they're in the ground. They're in the wrapped. ground. Yeah. Underground is all done. It's Underground is ready done. Ready to go and so on. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. So I know the kids are really anxious to get in there. When when are they going to be able to cut the ribbon and let's the go? The goal is the first of June. Is it? Uh, that's my understanding. Talking to the city, they said goal is the first of June. So we'll have so some it, kind of a celebration at that point. And and you've had other celebrations as well with kids involved. We actually did one last year just to sort of. Um, well, remind, well, it was a practice run for this year. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, any other comments you can think of that we should be talking about right now to get people to know about well, the I, water I, park? I think the fact that they, it's going to be really quite spectacular. There's a, a, I had a, a photograph that you, could, you won't fit on, uh, won't, isn't <laughs> visible. Um, showing some of the, the new pieces that they're putting in. Yeah. And I think, uh, well, we all need change. And, and the children so need something. It's so handy to get to and just jump on your car and you're there. So Exa And the parking is Su good. Yeah, Sue and, and, and Rose, thank you so much for coming and spending some time with us today. I know there's a ton of kids that are anxious and want to get in there and have some fun. And I know that your, uh, your, your sunrisers are going to have a great time down there. So let's go back to, to Lorraine and she's going to see I think she's getting stretched out again, I'm not sure. Lorraine, over to you. Thanks, Bob. We are actually planting some flowers now. Dr. J is going to teach me how to plant a flower. Absolutely. Well, one of the other things that we see a lot in the clinic is people will hurt themselves doing the weeding and the planting. You know, you're bent over, you've been doing it for an hour, you don't really notice it when, you, when you're doing it, you go and you try and stand up and you go, oh, I can't really do it. Uh -huh. So let's talk a little bit about how you should be working in the bed. Um, first of all, really? well, oh. Yeah, yeah, hey. <laughs> so, right, first of all, bags of soil. If you can, if you're a little worried about your back, if you've got a, a dodgy back, go with the smaller bags. Yes, it's a little cheap, it's a little bit more expensive, but at the end of the day, you're actually protecting your back. So, again, we want to always think about that bend and twist. Whether we're doing the raking, the shoveling, or the planting, we, uh, we've got to think about the bend and the twist. So we're just going to dump this in, and again, if you notice, we're just dumping this in straight. I should mention, when you're when you're bent over doing the planting, the weeding, these sorts of things, try not to curl over into a C shape. Oh. You see, so many people, they're bent over like this and you're into a C shape. You need to keep a little bit of that curve in your back. Our spine should have an S shape. So curve out in the upper back, curve in in the lower back. So always keep that in mind. It's when we get engrossed in what we're doing and we slowly yeah. start to descend down. Now, if you can hand me that spade. Now, what did you do wrong? Wrong spade? Wrong, well you could have, you, they're actually both just fine, but you did the bend and then twist. And again, you need to think about that. It's not the weight oh. of that spade, it's a little teeny tiny thing. But you want to actually pivot yourself around, pick up your thing, whether it's a plant, whether it's a spade, and go straight so, in. So, okay, so more like this? I would this. actually have you swivel right around. Just pivot yourself right around, pick it up, and then swivel back in. And if you're going along the bed, that's what you want to do, is you need to make sure that you're actually moving along. Instead of stretching. Instead of bending and twisting. Weed. You've got it, absolutely. Yeah, I've, no, Work I've done it because I've done it. Makes sense? Yes, makes absolutely. lots of sense. There Thank you go. You. Awesome. Um, in terms of other gardening tips, you know, if you're thinking about, if you again have a, a dodgy back, do a raised bed so you're not having to bend so much. Grab a stool, right, so you're not having to bend down, use your knees, your back quite as heavily. And, and vary your activity. Don't do one thing too long. Right? If you weed for an hour, you're in trouble. Stop and smell the roses. Nice. Right? Thank makes you. Makes sense? It yeah. certainly makes sense. Okay. So, Dr. J, thank you so much mm -hmm. for being on our show today, our 50th show. And if you want more information on where to find this great chiropractor, you can find him at www.purechiro.ca. Absolutely. Thanks awesome. a lot. Awesome. Thank you very much. And now we're going to pass the camera back to Anna. Thanks, Anna. Thank you so much, and welcome. Today we have Erin Hemmons from the Canadian Cancer Society here with us. Uh, she is the Health Promotion Coordinator for the Canadian Cancer Society. Welcome. And today we are going to talk a little bit about the Daffodil Campaign 
and what it's all about. Please, Erin, tell us, what is it all about? Sure, so April is Daffodil Month with the Canadian Cancer Society. And um, you might have seen a whole bunch of pins around town. I'm thank wearing you for mine. wearing yours, and I know <laughs> crew is wearing them. Thank you. Um, basically, what we're trying to do this month is to show those on a cancer journey that they're not alone. So we would like as many British Columbians to be donning this pin to show people that we're all thinking of them, we're all behind them, we're all with them, which is really important for someone going on that journey. Very important. And yeah. of course, we make a donation when we right. when we get our daffodils. What what is that? Where does our money go to? So the Canadian Cancer Society funds cutting-edge research, particularly in prevention. Um, so the, 70, the 75th anniversary is this year. We're That's very right. excited about it. it. Is and um, just for some context there, in the 40s, the early days of the society, the survival rate of someone diagnosed with cancer was about 25%. And That's now low. it's low. And now it's in, in the 60s. And wow. so we fund research that prevents cancer in the first place, but also allows people to live longer that is and awesome. better lives. Yeah, so wow. that's just one of the things that the money goes to, but something we're very proud of. That's a great thing for the money to go to. Um, now, you said it's the 75th anniversary that's for right. the Canadian Cancer Society, 75 years. Yeah. That is awesome. Now, are you guys planning a big party? <laughs> Not really. We're just trying to infuse the energy of, of having it be our 75th, 75th year into everything that we do. So our daffodil campaign is really exciting this year. There's a, there's a few different campaigns throughout the year and everything that I do in prevention this year, I have that in the back of my mind that we have come so long or we've come so far in, yeah. in such a time, you know, it's increasing awesome. our survival rate by that much is just phenomenal. So, so many lives are taken. Yeah. It, so sad. Yeah. And one, one event that's happening here in town, and it's, I know it's happening in June, and I'm just curious a little bit about it. It's called the Relay for Life. Is that's that right. correct? Yeah. That's just one event that, can you tell us a little bit sure. about it's, that? Sure. It's a great event, and it's so much fun to talk about. It's a 12-hour overnight event, and it happens here in Nanaimo on June 14th and 15th. Um, you can visit relaybc.ca to register a team or donate to a team or join a team if you don't have one. They can put you on one. Right. It's basically okay. an all-night party that focuses on um, celebrating those survivors and the caregivers, remembering those who have lost their lives, and then fighting back against the disease. And so the scope of Relay takes that kind of those three themes throughout the night and there's some beautiful ceremonies and there's music and there's dancing and there's and it's it's a great event to be a part of. It's an evening thing. It's an, it's an overnight thing. It's, it's an overnight. It's a total hoot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's be young fun. people and old people and it's it's really really fun. That sounds like yeah. a lot of fun. I love it. Now, um, Nanaimo can you tell us a little bit about the Cancer Society services that we have here in Nanaimo? It's surprising sure. that we do have. Sure. That's yeah, great. so I work, excuse me, out of the Nanaimo office on Poplar Street right. behind Terminal Park. And in that office, we have um, knowledgeable volunteers that staff um, every day from 9 to 3, except on the weekends. And wow. they're often cancer survivors themselves. So we'll get people in who have just been newly diagnosed and they're really raw. Right. And those folks get to talk to those people who are really aware of what it feels like to be diagnosed. Right. And so there's that interpersonal relationship. On top of that, we have a wig and breast prosthesis bank. Wow. We have a book lending program. Um, Nanaimo is the hub for Mid-Island for our volunteer driver program. So if someone right. can't get to a chemotherapy appointment or an oncology appointment, we arrange for drivers to pick them up, drop them off, pick them up again. Um, we arrange rides down to Victoria. Awesome. Wow, I'm yeah. surprised there's lots of services. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> now, unfortunately, our time has run short. Sure. And Thank you so much, Eric. I really, Thanks really appreciate it. And if you, anybody needs more information, it's www.cancer.ca. That's right. Correct? Or visit us at the, at the Poplar Street location. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank now you. we're going to go to our band, uh, The Tracers, performing Grumpy. <laughs> Stormy day, I'm feeling really angry and I can't find a reason why, why my fate like a freight train is bound to derail, but not fail, that's my stomping ground, wound up, sounding up black music, but not quite 
real, but so real won't come out quite right. Fight me, excite me, and shut me down. It feels all the same, but no one's to blame. Fights the last for days until we fall apart. I'm gonna cut the head off the chicken, and then I'll sit back and watch it run around all day. Then kick off my shoes for easy living, and then I'll lay my head down and blow my clouds away. I'm gonna cut the head off the chicken. And I'll sit back and watch her run around all day And kick off my shoes for easy living And then I'll lay my head down and blow my clouds away Feels okay for today A quiet air behind us Feels okay for today I'll just get it over with Feels okay for today. We'll put air behind us. Feels okay for today. I'll just get it over. I'll just get it over. stuff the tracers from right here in the Nimo will one on the bass Robbie McIntyre on the keys and vocals awesome stuff guys again that song there called grumpy and aptly they'll be talking with Andrew Roberts later in the hour about the music we'll have some more songs as well so shout out to their drummer Morgan Scott who couldn't be here but again great three-piece band check them out when you can uh, I do want to give a quick shout out as well back to the intro apologies to uh, Rose Davidson I got her name wrong there called the double seasons but again big thanks to Rose Susan and the Kiwanis Sunrisers Club for all that they do awesome stuff uh, also coming up on the show later on we have articles on the Nanaimo Festival of Banners we have the Walk the Mile in Your Shoes meant for Men's March Habitat for Humanity and Physical Fitness of course we're going to check in too with uh, Juliette how is the uh, painting on the banner going? Good. <laughs> Good all right a whole bunch of green there yeah, all right Will we get in a, will we allow Bob to actually do a little bit of work on this later on? Sure, I'll let him paint yeah. some. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <You> told me. <laughs> Look forward to seeing Bob's masterpiece. It's going to be awesome. Thanks, Juliet, again, stuff on the uh, Festival of Banners later on in the show. And before we continue on, I want to continue with the theme of uh, sending some shout outs to some of the volunteers who have helped make the show what it is now, over 50 episodes. So a big shout out right now to our main audio technician, Scott Smith who was a uh, story tells, actually started off as a camera operator and then broke his arm, which I think was actually arm wrestling Kelly Robinson. And then they put him on the soundboard and he's pretty much been there ever since. So he's the guy again that gets our microphones all up on running. They're cheering Scotty back there, gets our levels right. So yeah, thank you so much, Scott, for all that you do. Also want to send a big shout out to some of our volunteers who've been here pretty much since show number one. A big up Amanda Howie, who shows up here, does it all. Uh, great guy. So Howie Hennessy, also a big shout out to uh, Dax, also showing up early. He's the guy that gets all the graphics ready for the shows up in the control booth. And of course, operating the camera right now, we have Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte, how's it going? Putting me out of focus. So <laughs> <laughs> Again, she's offered all sorts of cameras, big sport, and a great soccer player, too, which uh, always gets respect in my book. So thank you guys so much. Again, volunteers for your work here on the show. All right, so uh, moving on now, we're going to, again, look more at these banners here. So uh, for, to a guy who's doing a banner job, often mistaken on the street for Bruce Banner, our own version of the Incredible Hulk, it's Mr. Bob Fenty. Bob, over to you. 
Thanks, Matt. And yes, I am doing a banner, and, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. And please welcome today to the show uh, Brenda Peck, who is the coordinator for the Festival of Banners that's taking place, and our wonderful artist, uh, Juliette Phillip. Welcome to the show, both of you. To have you. Great to have you here today. Thanks. And the, the program now, Brenda, has been going for... 26 years this year. And you've been doing it? 15 years I've been coordinating the project, but I first started as a painter. Oh, that's yeah. what, and you got hooked then, didn't you? I got yeah. hooked. I walked by one day, they were painting in the mall, and I thought, I saw this project, and I thought, oh my gosh, look, I get goosebumps still <laughs> after good. 25 them, yeah. years. Yeah. I walked by, saw these banners hanging up, and I thought, oh, would I ever love to but do you're that? You're an artist extraordinaire. No. You do incredible work. I'm not. I've seen some of the work you've I, done. Yes. Well, I haven't had any training. I just love painting. Love painting and yes. so when I said, I, could I do this? And they said, yeah, come on in. And so I started. And so how many banners do you think are going to get painted this year? Well, we need more banners. So we're hoping that we can do anywhere between there 200 and 400 banners. So come and pick up an entry form from there us. That's just that simple, folks. Yeah. Grab one of these and fill it out. That's right. Yeah. And it costs how much? $10 to, to paint. But before you paint, you have to know the theme. And the theme this year is Creative City. And you draw out a little sample on four inches by eight inches. You color it in with pencil crayon. Then you outline it in fine black marker. And then you bring it into me and we'll as, copy it onto a big banner so when you come in to paint it's already on the big banner for you ready to go you don't even have to draw it out on the big banner yeah wonderful yes I saw that today and actually it was interesting how they it's amazing how she does this folks she takes that little four by eight uh, card uh, you you photocopy it onto acetate. onto acetate then it goes into an overhead projector and she projects it onto the wall onto the fabric and actually draws the actual outline right on the fabric that you're looking at. So yeah, it's a wonderful, a wonderful thing to have. So um, the art gallery, well actually no, let's go back and talk for just a second though about the cost because there's a, more than the $10 fee oh, that people yeah. pay. It, it costs $10 to paint it and then sometimes the artists want to buy it back before they're finished painting it. Otherwise it goes online for sale. Uh, but the artists have the opportunity to buy it for $40, and then uh, the rest that don't buy it, they can per somebody else can somebody purchase else it can online purchase through it, yeah. the NanaimoArtGallery.com. Yeah. So and we've got more to talk about, Brenda. We're going to get cut off right now. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, but we, we're going to come back in just a few minutes, and, and we'll, I might even get well. I, I threatened to push Juliet. I don't think I will. She's doing. She wouldn't let me muck up her job. It's, it's, she's done such a great job. So. I don't think you'd muck it up. No. I watched you paint today. <laughs> so let's go over and see what Brian, Brian has got his walking shoes on. Over to you, Brian. Thanks, Bob. I have with me today, Sarah Dymock, who's with the Haven Society and a uh, participant in the uh, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes event, Brian Bogey. And I'm gonna find out a little bit more from you, Brian, in a second. But Sarah, tell us a little bit about this event and, and what it's for. And Thanks, Brian. Uh, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes is the International Men's March for to Stop Rape, Sexual Assault and Gender Violence Against Women. Uh, it's the fourth year that Haven Society has hosted the event in Nanaimo. So basically we get men to go out and collect pledges and raise money for us to put on some women's shoes and walk one mile on May 11th. Now, this May 11th time is 11 a.m.? 11 a.m. we kick off at Diana Crawl Plaza, and you can register either online through our website, havensociety.com, or you can turn up on the day. And it's, it's not, it is a men's walk, but you encourage other people to come along exactly. with the Exactly. It is, it, it is an opportunity for men to take a stand against gender violence, but we encourage them to bring along their friends, their family, to walk with them and support them on their walk. Good. Well, Brian, let's turn to you. Why are you involved in this event? Okay, yeah, sure, thanks. Um, because uh, I had a personal experience with violence in the home. My younger brother and I witnessed uh, my mother get hit when she was, uh, when, when, uh, when I was nine. And uh, she retaliated, she kicked him over the couch and I went into the kitchen and grabbed all the dishes and smashed them on the floor. And right after she grabbed us and, and took us away and uh, we never saw that guy again. 
Um, but for her at that time, she didn't have a lot of money. She went to her family for support, and, and for whatever reason, she didn't get the support. And uh, so there she was, you know, taking care of two kids, not a lot of money, no support, having to deal with the effects from the psychological and emotional and uh, physical abuse. And uh, so she made a decision to give my brother and I up for, uh, to social services for six months while she took care of herself. And uh, I'm here because if, a, you know, a, if a, a service like Haven Society had been around at that time, who knows, things could have been different and everything could have panned out differently. Um, it's a great cause to help uh, women and children that experience the violence in the home. And uh, for me, you know, to raise a little money, to don shoes similar to those, maybe not those, um, is, is, is a small price to pay to, uh, to support this. Well, so Brian and like me, other men and in this community would be wearing shoes to walk a mile in her shoes yes. to see what it's like. Yes. And Sarah, can you tell us, um, where can people get more information about this? Uh, the best place to go is our website, havensociety.com. It's got information about the event, uh, where you can get shoes, and uh, just how you can participate. Well, I think uh, that gives us a great amount of information. People can step forward in this wonderful cause and certainly show up on May 11th. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks Thank you, so Brian, much. for your moving story. And we'll turn it back to Bob, who's with more banners. Thanks, Brian. And yes, we are. The, you should look around. We have banners galore with us today. Uh, and Juliet, as we mentioned earlier, is doing an incredible job. No, I'm not going to come over, Juliet. It's okay. You're doing a fine job. But let's talk briefly, uh, Brenda, about the actual cost involved in getting this project up and running. Well, to, to do this project every year, it costs anywhere between 15 in twenty thousand dollars. So when someone well, my little ten dollars is not going to go very far, is it? No, it doesn't. And you know this is all nonprofit. So uh, when you buy your banner, you're paying forty dollars. So that costs fifty dollars. And then Nanaimo Art Gallery takes care of the other fifty dollars. But really, it's not so much the Nanaimo Art Gallery. It's our sponsors. Oh, and they are. They are Telus and Nanaimo Port Authority and Sherwin-Williams, and Technofield, and oh my gosh, there's a whole slew of them. And Ten if, of them, yes. Yeah, and if we didn't have them, there would be no Banner Festival. <laughs> We're having lots of fun today. This is the 50th, as we mentioned earlier, and, and there's lots of activity happening today. But uh, the, the banners now, once they're finished, are gonna get hung where, Brenda? Uh, they get all hung downtown on Commercial Street, Stewart, Front Street, Terminal, Nickel Street, uh, Wellesley, Fitzwilliam, uh, Victoria, uh, Commercial, Bastion, Stewart all Avenue. All over the city. Oh, yep. <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere Wonderful. downtown. Yeah. And across uh, Stewart Avenue going to the ferry. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, if you're looking, folks, if you're looking for, uh, for, for to come and paint a banner, uh, give Brenda a call at 250-713-2484. And also their, their website is, uh, is there. You can look on the website, nanaimoartgallery.com. There's some great information there about the, the program, about the gallery, uh, the, uh, the banner program that's going on. Uh, and, actually, and, I, and I'll tell you, I started my banner today. Yay! And I, she, she twisted my arm and I oh, got into it. Ow, yeah, she ow, did. Ow. She really twisted my arm. And I'm, and I'm doing, I'm having fun. It really is. It's going to be a neat one of a ship and a watch and so on. I, I won't get into that, but that's, yeah. But anyway, Brenda, you're doing a, a super, super job. Thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing all those banners hung up on the street and, and having a great time. And now let's go over to Andrew and he's going to talk to our musicians. Andrew. Thanks, Bob. Uh, well, earlier in the show, Matt uh, Carter said that I traced all my drawings in high school, in school, and uh, so I mean maybe that's true, but uh, at least I didn't. Uh, you know, I could color within the lines in my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coloring book, uh, unlike him. So I got him there. But anyway, I'm here with the tracers, uh, Will and Robbie. Thanks for being here, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Right on. So, who are the tracers? Well, we're just um, musicians. Uh, I did one year in the music program. Morgan did one year. Will's doing a second year now. We're just kind of coming together and taking it on the jazz approach. 
just kind of getting things started. Awesome. And uh, yeah, you're relatively new. You just played your first show, what, uh, like a month ago? How did that yeah. go? Yeah, well, it was pretty good, actually. We had a good turnout. A lot of people had good things to say, and hopefully we'll have more to come. Right on, right on. Now, um, you, have you seen a lot of the local bands in town? Um, what are your opinions on them? Um, there's a lot of great bands in town that are actually being really good to us. We got a gig with the distributors coming up on the 26th at the Chile location, and uh, I hear the Body Politic is getting their spring tour going, and uh, we're good friends with them, so, yeah. Oh, right on. Now, um, I've heard you've been working on some live recordings? Yeah, we did a couple of originals. Uh, in, uh, there's a friend of ours in the music program. His name's Jesse McNeil. He's trying to get some uh, live recording videos going and some EP recordings going, so we're going to hopefully do some more with him soon. Right on. And any like, bands that you want to play with uh, coming up? Any bands that you can think of that hmm. uh, you know maybe more popular or outside of uh, Nanaimo? Uh, I don't know. It's always been kind of, I don't know, my kind of thing to work towards. You maybe get like a maybe kind of like an MC, like a hip hop kind of band in with us. That'd be kind of cool to do kind of a collaboration. Yeah, that so, would be different. Yeah, for sure. Right yeah. on, right on. Now, uh, where can people see you next? Um, hopefully, all over downtown Nanaimo, and hopefully down to Victoria Off Island, maybe. Just you got a gig uh, April 26th, is it? Yeah, April 26th downtown, yeah. Uh, where is that at? That's on Front Street there. That's where the, uh, the Quartz restaurant is or used to be. It's oh, in right, the Chile the location, yeah. CHLY uh, yeah, yeah. building. Oh, okay, yeah. right on, right on. And uh, so that's April 26th. Um, you're on uh, Facebook as well? Yeah, facebook.com slash the tracers. Yeah. Right on. Uh, definitely check them out uh, on Facebook there. And uh, now, yeah, so tell me a little bit about your instrument there, Will, if you um, want to step up to the mic. Sure. <laughs> Do a little switcheroo. Uh, it's the upright bass, and I guess he's a little taller than me. <laughs> how, long, how long have you been playing? Seriously, for two and a half years now. And then I played all through high school for five plus on that. Have you guys been friends for a while? Like, how did you come together? Ah, uh, yeah, we met in a socials class back in high school and put a little blues band together and just kind of had bands going all around through that. Right on, right on. Now, uh, yeah, so. Check them out on Facebook, uh, April 26th. Uh, you can see them live at CHLY headquarters. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. You got a song coming up? What yes. are you going to play? <laughs> some it's people. Magic. You're going to play it's some magic. people. Right on. Yeah. Can't wait to hear it, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Alice. I was born just in time to see my life grow. My voice it needs to show itself. I'll grow up and I'm still growing up and we're all growing old and we need to stop and think. I think of a day in the future away, far, far away from here. A wise man told me from your position, the writing on the wall could use some revision. And as the story goes along, we're not the way the plot's long gone, but it hasn't gone away. So some people need to get some advisors to show them how to live, maybe show them some manners. The things that we learn from the street are like cancers. They never really leave the stick and give us some answers. Music is truth, and truth it be sung. The melodies of pure imagination. Yeah, I'm thinking we need to change a piece in. It's time to taste the life that's running our way. I wait for my fires, my fires of a war. World domination, yeah, yeah. We sing a song, a song for me, ah. A song about the world, if the world were free. I paint a picture of
guys that was great uh, perfect workout workout song to get my workout started I have here with me today Curtis Vitsa from over the hurdle welcome Curtis well, I'm really pleased to have you here well thanks for having me so right now as we get started not gonna waste any time to get out and start skipping for us so go ahead please start skipping okay off, here I go and you can tell us a little bit about what you do absolutely so what what do I do I'm a trainer at over the hurdle <laughs> athletics <laughs> Well, we're already working on that, aren't we? <laughs> I'm the owner, operator, and co-founder. What do we offer? I offer personal training, team training. Oh, we're getting better. Keep going. We do group fitness as well and also offer membership style of workout. What makes us different from the rest? We guarantee our results. We offer nothing but positive life change. And every single person who walks in our door gets better on a daily basis. So, Anna, I think I've had enough of your skipping. <laughs> We're going to come on top you. of the BOSU for me, no. please. So, and what she's going to do is... This one. This one's really tricky. It's a challenge A little bit of balance party. work. We're going to stimulate the central nervous system. So, and I'm going to use my arm here, so I don't want you to fall. I know. Okay, so one you foot. You know what I'm like on this oh, thing. Oh, I right? do. Yeah. One foot, two feet. Now, what she's going to do, she's going to stare at one spot at the floor, anywhere she'd okay. like. Now, right now, there's almost a small tremor going on underneath <laughs> Anna here, but it's getting there's better. There's always a small tremor. So right now, she's got her shoulders back, hips are back, right. okay? Her quads are yep. firing, her glutes are working. He wanted me to do this on one foot. I'm she's like, no doing way. absolutely amazing. I'm no really way. loving it. Tremor, tremor, tremor. <laughs> Look at this guy. And now, break. So what, ask me for now, step off the ball for me. <laughs> okay, Curtis, hang on. She's doing great, yeah. Oh, that there was we perfect. Go. Now we're All on right, front smooth. plank. Front plank, okay. on our forearms. So what we're okay. doing here, with her forearms on the ball, holding the body up. She has her glutes fired off, her body straight, absolutely perfect form. Her yeah. core's firing, her shoulder's firing. She's breathing and she's still smiling. <laughs> that's the big key right there. She's having a little bit of fun. Okay. Uh, breathe, that's, you have key, And right? breathing in three, two, one. And, and now you're going to a Bosu burpee. Now this is her, she called me and said, Curse, I got some burpees on camera. I got you, Anna, no worries. <laughs> she's gonna grab both sides for me. She's gonna do a push, she's gonna down oh, on the right. ground, she's gonna do a push up. That's right. So push up, she's gonna walk her feet beside it, overhead and jump. And she's gonna do three <laughs> more for me. This is, there we go, we got, then. Don't forget, I missed last week's class. She's doing great. And then, one two. More. And one more for me, Anna. Please, we got this. We got this. <laughs> Last one. And over the head. And three. <laughs> little love, little love, little love. That heart Yay. is racing. Excellent. We're going to, I got to catch my breath, but we're going to take a short break. And we're going to go over to Brian and Teresa on the main side. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. I hope you get your recovery time in. So I have with me here today, Teresa Pring, who is with Habitat for Humanity, mid-Vancouver Island. Tell us a little bit about, I guess it was a big announcement just recently by the federal government. That's right. We were really optimistic about the announcement. The federal government in the uh, federal budget announced that they were renewing the uh, investment in affordable housing uh, for across Canada, $253 million per year and a five-year investment of $1.25 billion. So. We're very, very optimistic that that's going to mean something positive for our affiliate Habitat for Humanity and, and other social housing programs in BC and across Canada. So obviously people are going to ask, how does this filter down to the local level? And you're with the Mid-Vancouver Island Group. Yes, well, how it will fo 
you know, drift down to us, we hope, is, is through the um, recognition of, of what was in the uh, federal budget was uh, focus on skilled trade development. And Habitat for Humanity has been using uh, apprentices from the uh, VIU Carpentry Trades Program and the uh, Heavy Equipment Operators Program, even the Baking Department. Um, we're using as many youth um, to develop skills for them. So Habitat for Humanity is actually uh, becoming a like a living classroom for these future trades professionals. And uh, how it will fo focal down to us is... Uh, you know, a match for the provincial government in BC housing, perhaps uh, skilled trades workers development and also affordable home ownership. Well, in locally, you've just started your a new set of homes. Yes. You broke ground on that on April 3rd. That's right. And those are located at what location here in town? Uh, they're right at 553 and 555 Purdue Street. Uh, adjacent to it is the two homes that we did last year, which were um, uh, built green BC, uh, gold rated, and the apprentices uh, worked on that build for us. So a great accomplishment for them. And so we're kicking off this uh, build uh, about two weeks from now we'll be started and we'll start fundraising for that and bringing in the uh, apprentices as well. Good. Now, maybe, maybe people don't realize You've been in existence since what, 94? That's right, 1994. And we, in 2001, we were the first British Columbia um, habitat that opened up a restore. So that's what has been the driving force funding us to build homes is our restore. It makes us self sufficient. And uh, since then, we've built this will be our 14th, 13th, and 14th home. Good. I personally have utilized the uh, goods that you have and re resell and bring back into yes. the system. Uh, at the restore, and, and I'm sure there's a lot of regular, regular customers who come by and check yes. out your items. Oh, lots. It, it's really become a, a destination place to go to on a Saturday to save money and to, you know, work on your home renovation project and, and also to help Habitat for Humanity and help us raise money for our future builds. And these builds provide affordable housing yes. to worthy families and this area. That's right. Low income working families um, can get an interest free mortgage with Habitat for Humanity, saving them, you know, probably $200,000 in the lifetime of their mortgage. So we're impacting the lives of the people that are working on the homes, the skilled trades development, the um, low, low income families are going to develop a better, uh, better uh, life for themselves and a legacy for their family. And you know, also we're trying to complement what the federal government wants is, you know, developing some skilled workers in our uh, country and also to make a difference in affordable so housing. For further information, there's there's a website that they can contact you yes. on, www.habitatmvi.org? That's right. Well, thank yeah. you for coming in, Teresa. Thank you. Great information. Let's go back to Anna and let's see if she's caught her breath yet. I have, Brian. Thank you so much. We're back again. And this time, look at and he brought a light one with him tonight. Absolutely. What Anna's <laughs> going to do for us, she's right now, overhead okay. slam. So balls Start. over the head, straight down for 20 seconds. I love this, by the way. Now, what she's doing here, by throwing that ball straight down, yeah, she's getting the bad out from her day first. I Number am. one, stress-free life here. Throwing the ball straight down, her core's activating, her shoulders are going to work, <laughs> and she's still smiling. She's exhaling every time, a whole body workout here. And now she's gonna break for me. Okay, so and next then. we're gonna do, we're gonna overhead side to side oh. slam. So over the head down to one side, back down the other side. Oh, watch By yourself, opening Chris. up, we have some, <laughs> she's out to get me now because I'm working a little too hard. Over side to side, we're getting our obliques to fire, these funny muscles under our, by our rib cage called serratus anterior, funny things. And she's gonna <laughs> keep going and keep going and keep going and break for me, Anna. Now, okay. I'm gonna give her a band here, we're gonna do this one together. This, yeah, this so what we're gonna do too. here, oh, sorry. we're gonna step on it together. Yeah, it's, I'm exciting sometimes. We're gonna step on it, our feet are shoulder apart. Oh, wait, hey, hang we're, on, we're, okay, we're, here we go. We're gonna bring the band up, put the rubber behind our elbows. We're gonna squat down so our hips are gonna go back as far as they can. We're gonna press up through our heels and press over our head. That's one, and then down, and up, and two. Now, we're not just talking about beach season here, right? We're more of a lifestyle gym. It is. Some people want to come in, they get, I want Kurt, I want to get super fit right now and then leave you for a long time, then come back. The average Canadian, at the time they're 40, loses and gains over a thousand pounds. Why don't you just come on in, lose 20, and hang out with me? 
And give me two more here, Anna. Two and more. I, one. I'm so glad I come to you And two, week. and a little bit of a break. <laughs> All right. It's so, awesome. as we come for now. a wash, getting ready for your tour to rock. <laughs> Correct? Yeah, right. No? Not, not, not <laughs> no, at all, no, hey? No. no. So, Over the Hill is a fun place where everyone come in, whether you're an athlete, whether yeah. you're an old, just coming out of, into retirement, whether you're a toddler, high school, mm -hmm. lose weight, gain weight, look good, feel good, play good. Or That's just what we do over at Over the Hurdle. Average person, just like me, <laughs> who loves it. <laughs> I do. Um, this is so great, Curtis. Thank you so much and for coming. Thank you for and having me. And I really, really appreciate it. I, I know there's some news today too, by the way, our 50th. Oh, absolutely, yeah, 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 before we do our, the 50th. I have to catch uh, my breath. Yeah, Anna, you catch your breath <laughs> off the stuff. Curtis, thank you so much. Thank for you, Curtis, I really show. appreciate thank you. it. And uh, again, thank you so much for inspiring us to become members of your uh, fitness protection program. Uh, all day, every day. Exactly, and I think uh, since we have our first guest that could actually crush me if I keep going with these really bad puns, yeah. I am gonna go on <laughs> with, the, uh, with the theme of uh, celebrating here the 50th episode of the show on Shaw. Uh, Anna, I don't know if you uh, remember, you actually joined us in the summer of 2012, so it's pretty much been almost a year year now so exactly congratulations for that and again um, a big shout out to uh, who we mentioned off the top of the show uh, Kate Bergen and Todd Jones who really again came up with the idea for the show pushed it through also to uh, Staz Bobkoff and Stephen Quartz for all the technical support to get it going I also want to uh, send some shouts out uh, to other hosts as well uh, in the past uh, Junia Tozzi who's now with Shaw TV in Vancouver yes turned the show into an awesome career in the big city as well as uh, Kelly Robinson who's been a host as well as a director and a script assistant uh, other staff here, uh, Jocelyn Matwe, who's worked uh, director for uh, floor director, script assistant, and camera operator. And again, uh, we have to send a huge, huge shout out to all of our many, many volunteers who have come on the show to uh, make this uh, what it is. Uh, for instance, a um, number of our hosts, a uh, big shout out to, again, back from the beginning, Brian Sugiyama, Tara Keeping, Bob Fenty, Andrew Roberts, uh, Joan Heron, Anna Bosa, catching her breath over here, uh, Lorraine Jensen, we've got um, great journalist Merv Unger on the show now. Also, we've had Kim Plumley, Ian Holmes, Tally Campbell, Kayla Vickers, thank you guys so, so much for your support in front of the camera. And again, a huge, massive thank you to folks uh, behind the scenes. Uh, I, I can't remember everyone here, but um, I will mention quickly uh, Scott, Howie, Dax, Terry, Charlotte, Raymond, Clint, Danny, Jeremy, Yan, Fiona, Anton, Leon, Katie, Jeremy, Sean, and again, many, many more. We do appreciate it so much. Also, can I be remiss not to send a big shout out to our executive producers, uh, Cam McLean and Michael Wiley, for their ongoing support of the show. And of course, uh, producer Melissa Hall. Big round of applause for Melissa Hall, everyone. Come on. <laughs> she. Uh, She's the one who, again, who's responsible for coordinating all these shows, uh, getting show ideas, contacting guests, assigning vo finding volunteers, assigning volunteers to different roles, uh, giving us all feedback. It's so much appreciated. So, uh, Melissa, thank you very, very much. And one of the most important things you did was you also got this cake over here, which we're going to walk over right about now. Yeah, she does talk to good folks at Country Grocer to help uh, get us fed. Ooh. That piece is mine. <laughs> so thank you to Country Grocer. That oh, looks really good. Thank you so much to uh, Dodds Furniture as well for the support. Should also let you know you can now find us directly on Facebook. We've got our own Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash the show on Shaw. We got pictures and videos up there. You can also find previous episodes of the show there or on YouTube. Check out Shaw TV, Central Vancouver Islands as well. And before I invite everyone over to dive into the pieces of cake that I haven't licked yet, uh, here's one more song from The Tracers called I Could Start Fire. And look what we started. Here's to the next 50 episodes full of fire of the show right here on Shaw TV, Central Vancouver Island. Well, I'm no meteorologist, I don't have the time for this I'm standing in the rain and I can tell what the weather is My dirty sweatpants have never fit better Looking at me funny is no newsletter But the thing about you and me that we can't agree Is I don't care what kind of world you see It doesn't matter to me, yeah, yeah Well, well, I know about money and I lack thereof I know what's funny when you're working up And you got no time before you're working, sunny The checks seem fake like the Easter Bunny But the thing about money that isn't really funny Is the money can't go where the sun really wants to shine now Let me tell you what's on my mind Yeah, well I never said, never said Never said I knew all the words of this I'm just making it Never said, I didn't believe that love was the God above No, I never said Never said that I could start fire with two stones. Yeah, I'm just glad I found the light. Found the light. Well, I'm no 
environmentalist, I don't have the time. My head like the ozone has a hole, and my brake light's broken and I need to stop. My brakes feel broken, got the voice in the shop. But my mind is bright like the moon in the night. Haters don't slow my road, they just hold on time. Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like I need my own space tonight. I feel like slapping on a bass tonight. My life's gonna fall out of place tonight. I wouldn't have it any other way tonight. Gonna be all alone out of spite tonight. Everybody's thinking you sleep while we're taking flight. Hey, yeah. Well, well, I never said, never said, never said I knew all the words to this. I'm just making it. I never said I didn't believe that love was the God above. No. I never said. Never said that I could start fire with two stones. Yeah, I'm just glad I found the light. Found the light. said that I could account for this. I never said, never said, never said, never said there is a single thing in the world to miss. So I never said, never said, never said, that you could give a care what I think of you. Well, I never said, never said, never said, no, not a single word got through to you. Dodds Furniture's The Show is brought to you by Dodds Furniture and Mattress.